Consider this computer program here and let's have a look at the first line. This is string one is assigned. If you fail to practice your art, it will soon disappear. So string one is assigned this particular string here. And of course, if we look at this in the execution space, what we will know is we will get an instance of the string class and we can see that this string here appears in the center of this diagrammatic representation of an object and of course you can see I've put these four dots here implying that this string is much longer and in fact it is this string here obviously I haven't put it in the center of here because there's not enough room but we can see that this particular object has this name because that's the name as it appears in the computer program we can now come on to here and we can see that string 2 is assigned O and I'm not showing that in the execution space. Let's simply accept that that's a string variable referred to as string2. If we look at the next line, what we can see here, it says string count is assigned string1 full stop count and in brackets we have string2. Now this here is an example of a message. Here we can see we have a dot. So this message is something that uses dot notation and string1 is the object to which we send this particular message which takes with it this particular parameter and of course we know in this parameter here which is string 2 we have this O. If we look at the object we will know that surrounding the center of this object we have a number of methods that are associated with the string class Consequently, this object, which is an instance of the string class, will have those particular methods. And of course, if we look at this line, we can see that the method that we want to execute, the method we want to invoke, is the count method here. So we will send this message to the object, which we can see is count, and it takes with it this particular parameter, which is the variable string underscore 2, which we know from the program stores O. So this will invoke that particular method here. Now what this method will do, it'll look at the string, which we can't see in full here, so we'll come up to this string, and what it's going to do is going to look at how many times this O, which is defined here in the message, is found in this string. In other words, how many O's are in this string? Well let's count the number of O's in the string. We can see we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So count will actually generate the number 5. The code within the count is responsible for looking at the string, counting the number of O's in this case that's in the string and gets the number 5. And of course this number 5 is then going to be returned and it's going to be returned to this variable here, string underscore count. Of course we then execute this line of code and what it will do, it will print the string count, which was assigned 5 at this particular point in the program. So the output from the program would be, as you can see here, 5. Let's have a look at the program again. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to amend it slightly. And this is the amendment. And what I have done, I have removed this line of code here from the original. And I've put this bit of that line here inside the print statement. Now what this is going to do, this is the message. And of course what's going to happen is count together with this particular parameter is going to be sent to this object and we're going to count how many O's are in this string. So it's going to behave in exactly the way it did before except we can see we've put the message inside this particular print statement here. So when the program runs it will behave in exactly the same way as it did before and you can see we get 5 as the output. Let's now consider this computer program here. It's the same as the first one we looked at in this particular video. The difference is here, however, is that I'm making string 2 be assigned OU. In other words, what we're going to do on this particular line is pass in OU here and count is going to find how many OUs that are in this string. And we can see that there are 1 Two. So when the program now finishes its execution, we come to this line, then it's simply going to print the output as 2, as you can see here. Let's have a look at this program here. It's the one we looked at right at the very beginning of this particular video. And what's going to happen? We're going to count the number of eyes that appear in this string. 
and of course we should know that it's 5. Let's move this one to the top and let's bring in another program and you can see there's a slight amendment here. If you look in this area you can see that I've changed this to uppercase I. Now what's going to happen, this program is going to do more or less what it did before, but it's going to look for how many uppercase I's appear in this string. And you can see that there's just a 1. So when the program runs, it tells it that there's 1 as the result, because there is only one uppercase I in the string. Now in total, if you think about the I's, there's 6. But this shows there's a distinction between lowercase and uppercase i's when you're writing code and counting these individual characters within strings. Now one of the things you could do here, you could take the string and you could actually take it and change it to all uppercase and then go looking for i if you wanted to find out how many i's there were in total regardless as to whether they were upper or lowercase. Alternatively, you could take the string and you could change it to all lowercase and then use the search for the lowercase i. There's other ways to do that, but that is a, a one way off the top of my head you could do if you wanted to find all the i's, for example, in a string. Let's now consider this computer program here. It looks pretty much the same. There is a difference, however. When we look at the count, you can see here we have the string that we're going to be searching for, which you can clearly see is the i we've set up on this line. But I've included a zero here. Now what does that mean? Well it means the count is going to start from the zero position, which is here. And of course if we're starting from the beginning, which is what we've done when we saw this without this zero, then we're going to get the result of five and you can see that's in fact what we do get. If we now however have a look at this program, we can see we've changed this to eleven. Now where is the 11th position of the string? And the answer it is here. Now what you need to do, you start from the beginning of the string and then you count and you make sure you count the spaces. So this is the 11th position of the string. And you now count how many i's there are from this position to the end of the string. And you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4. And consequently when the program prints how many eyes that are you can see it will print for. Now let's consider this computer program here and what you can see we're using count again to go and look for the number of eyes in the string but if you look inside these brackets here you can see we have one, two, three parameters. This parameter is 11 and that's telling you where to begin where you wish to count from in the string and we're going to begin at this point point 11. Remember to count the spaces. Now what's this 22 defining? Well it's defining this point in the string and we search between those two points and we count how many i's that are between position 11 and position 22 and you can see there's the one and that is here. Consequently when this particular program produces its output as defined by this line then you're going to see that we get the output of 1 telling us there is one lowercase i between positions 11 and 22 in the string. Now we've seen three examples of the message being sent to a string. We've seen this one where the message takes with it the string that we're going to be looking for and this one here takes in two parameters the string that we're looking for and the point in the string to which we're sending this message. You begin your search and also this one here where you send in three parameters, the string you're looking for, the point that you start searching and the point at which you finish searching. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.